Hey guys, and welcome to the fourth video in the AI chatbot series. Now in today's video, we're actually going to get into more of the fun stuff and get working with our model and getting it talking back and forth with us. Now, this is not super difficult to do. We've already trained the model. There's just a few things that we kind of need to set up here to get the model running. Now, the first thing that we're going to talk about is the fact that we don't really want to have to do all of this code every time that we want to use the model. So every time we want to make one prediction in our current state, we need to run all of this code. So we're going to clean that up first. We're going to save the model in kind of a better form than this or just a different way. And we're going to make sure that we don't do all the pre-processing of this data multiple times. Now, right now, it only takes a few seconds to train the model. But if you have a lot more data in this JSON file or more complex models, then you definitely don't want to be rerunning this code if you don't have to. So the first thing that I'm actually going to do here is just set up a try accept clause. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to open up some saved data, which we'll save in just a second. And if that doesn't work, then we will generate the the data. So we're going to do try and then underneath here, we're going to put do accept and notice that I put uh, if I spell accept correctly, um, notice that I just put all of this code here. So all the way up until training uh, equals numpy dot array output equals numpy dot array in the accept. That's because we're not going to do any of this if what's in the try works successfully. Now, what we're going to do is actually start by just importing pickle up here. And what we're going to do is try to load in some pickle data. And that data is going to be our words, our labels, our training and our um, output data. Now, that's because we need that data for the model. So if we can have that model already or have that data already saved and we've already processed it and used it before, then there's no point in running all this and stemming the words and doing all that again. So what we're going to do is just say with and then in this case, we're going to say open and we're going to put the name of where we're going to save our information. We haven't yet saved it. I'm just going to say data dot pickle. And I believe you do have to end this in a pickle like dot pickle. So do that. And then we're going to put WB or sorry, not WB RB. And that stands for read bytes because we're going to save this data as bytes. We're going to do that as F. And what we're going to say is uh, open data dot pickle RB as F. And we're going to say, uh, what is it? Model or not model. I got to figure out how we're going to do this. We're going to do words, labels, training, output equals, and then pickle dot load. F. Now I know this probably doesn't really make much sense to you, but what we're going to do is we're going to save all of these four variables into our pickle file. And then when, if it is saved and we open this correctly and it works fine, we're going to load in these lists because those are the only lists we actually need for our model. So we'll pickle dot load that file. It should load that up. Now, obviously we haven't yet saved this. So to save this, what we're going to do is at the end of this except here. So right after training and output, we're going to save all of those in the same form. So I'm actually just going to copy this and we're just going to change a few things around right under here. So let's get the indentation correct. We'll say with open data dot pickle. In this case, we're going to put it in WB mode. And now what we're going to do is instead of having uh, what do you call it? Pickle dot load. We're going to say pickle dot dump. We're going to put all of these in brackets like this. So it should be all of these in brackets like a tuple. We're going to do comma F and then close that bracket, which means write all of these variables into a pickle file so we can save it. Uh, so this way, when we run this code, it's going to try to open up this first. If it can't open it, it'll do all this and then it'll save it. And then the next time that we run this, it'll just simply open it up for us and we won't have to do that. So now we have the model here. Uh, we actually have to keep this model code like this, but what we can do is just modify one thing. So we're not training the model if we already have a model that exists. So to do that, what we're going to do is say try, and we're just going to try to load the model and to load the model is really easy. We're just going to do model dot load and then model dot TF learn just like that. And now otherwise we'll say accept, and we'll do all this. So that's it for saving our model. So now what's actually going to end up happening is when we run this script, if a model already exists, then we won't retrain the model. And if this data that we've already pre-processed exists and we've saved it as already as data.pickle, uh, we won't bother doing that as well. Now, if you change anything in your intense.json file, just throw like, like an X in here or something so that it doesn't open up your old pickle data. It actually runs through all of this. Or you can just delete the old pickle file and delete the old model because you'll need to retrain it on that new information that you put in this intense.json uh, file.
So anyways, that's it for that. And now time to actually start making predictions. Now, remember that when we trained our model, we fed it bags of words. So that is actually the same information we have to give our model if we want to make a prediction. So the first step in kind of classifying any sentences or getting any kind of output from the model is to turn a sentence input from the user into a bag of words. So I'm going to write a function that is called bag of words like this. It's going to take a, let's just call it S and it's going to take a list of words. Now this list of words is important because it needs to know how we're going to create this bag of words, which is going to be dependent on this words list. Now, fortunately for us, we have this words list. Uh, we've loaded it in either with the pickle file or we've created it here. So what we can do is just start writing this to create a bag of words. So we're going to say bag equals a blank list. That's where we're going to store all of the words, obviously. And then let me just go and write the rest. I just got to look at my other screen here. So I'm going to say s underscore words equals in this case NLTK dot word underscore tokenize and then we're just going to put s in there. So now we're going to get a list of tokenized words and now we're going to stem these words the same way we did before. We're going to say s underscore words equals and in this case we'll do a list and we'll say stemmer dot stem word dot lower for word in s underscore words that's going to stem all of our words and now what we're going to do actually is just modify this bag and then write a little bit more code so i'm going to say bag actually in this case is going to be zero for underscore in range the len of words now what this is going to do is just create a blank um, bag of words list and then we'll actually change the elements in here to represent if a word exists or if it doesn't so that's just setting up a list that has a bunch of zeros for however many words we have. And now it's time to write a little for loop that will simply generate this bag list properly. So now we're going to say for S and actually we can't do S. We'll say for S E. Does that make sense to do that? Mm, not really. Well, whatever we'll do for S E and S underscore words. And now we're going to say if, or sorry, not if for I comma W in enumerate in enumerate and then words what we'll do now is say if uh, w equals equals se which means that the current word that we're looking at in this words list is equal to um, the word in our sentence what we will do is we will say bag i dot append and then we will simply append a one representing that the word exists Otherwise, we will do bag. Uh, actually, we don't need an else statement because we already filled them all with zeros. So that's all we need to do to actually generate our bag of words. I don't really want to go through this code. It's pretty straightforward. I hope you guys can understand that. And then we're just going to return a numpy dot array that has our uh, bag in it, like that. Now, what this is going to do is just exactly what it says here. Essentially, take this bag of words, convert it into a numpy array and return it to well, wherever we need that. So now uh, we have this bag of words functions working fine. And the next thing we're going to do is write the code that will ask the user for some kind of sentence and then spit out a response. So to do this, we'll actually have to start using the model and I'm just going to create a function called chat and we'll simply call chat at the end of our file if we want to start chatting with the model as opposed to just training it. So now I'm going to say uh, print and this will just be like the first print statement like start talking with the bot just giving the user some input saying like the bots ready to go whatever something like that and now we're gonna say while true we're gonna say IMP which stands for input is equal to input and I'm just gonna put you colon meaning like this is what you are saying like you type to the bot and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if IMP dot lower equals equals quit we'll put this in brackets then break so this is just a way that you can get out of the program if you type quit then it will simply break this while loop so that you can end uh, because otherwise you would just keep going continuously or you'd have to close the program which we don't want so maybe let's add a thing here like type quit to stop or something like that okay now after that what we're gonna do is say if they didn't type quit now we're going to tr turn this input, whatever words they typed in, into a bag of words, feed it to the model and get what the model's response should be. So to do this, what we're going to do is say, um, what is it? Model dot predict. 
And then in here, we're going to pass a list. So just create a blank list like this. And inside the list, we're going to say bag of words, IMP colon words. Now, the reason we do this is because model.predict actually makes predictions on multiple things at once. So it expects you to give it a bunch of different entries and then it gives you a bunch of different predictions. But in our case, we only want to predict for one thing, but we still have to feed it in a list. So we just put it in a blank list. We say bag of words, input words, and that's our function bag of words. We'll create a bag of words with the input that we gave it. So we're going to do that. We're going to save that as uh, like results. Okay. And we'll say results equals model dot predict like that. Now the issue that is when we get our results, we're not going to get any like real good output to give to the user. All it's going to give us is a probability and I'll show you what it looks like here so that you guys can get an idea uh, if we would decide to print it out. So let's run this now because I think this is important to show. Let's go Python uh, main dot pi. See if I ran into any errors by the way for now. Um, Hmm, let's see. Let's run this one more time. Oh, well, I haven't called the chat function. So that would probably be why that wasn't running. <laughs> let's see this now. Python main.py. And it says you. So let's type something. Let's type hello. And int object has no attribute append. Hmm. Oh, sorry. My bad, guys. Let's fix this first of all before I show that. So bag i instead of dot append one is just going to be equal to one. So we're going to change that line right there. We're going to run python main.py again. And now if I type something like hello, you can see that this is our output for the model's prediction. Now, this doesn't really mean anything to us. This is actually just a bunch of different probabilities. And this is how probable the model thinks each of our different little neurons that are there is a, um, what do you call it? Like how probable it thinks each neuron is that class essentially. So we type hello, it tries to classify hello. And what it does says, well, I think it's this much uh, this much, this neuron, I think it's this much, this neuron, it's this much, this neuron telling you how likely it thinks it is each specific class. Cause remember each neuron represents a specific class. So what we need to do is actually pick out the greatest number in here and say, that is the classification from our model. So to do that, uh, there's a few little tricks we can use. I'm just going to use what's known as argmax from numpy. So to do that, I'm going to say results underscore uh, index equals numpy dot arg max. And we're going to put results. And what this will do is give us the index of the greatest value in our list. So just like our list represents all of the different probabilities of classes or tags or intents or whatever we want to call them, all of these things like greeting, goodbye, age, whatever, it'll give us the index of the greatest number. Then we can use that index to figure out which response to actually display. So now what we're going to say is uh, we'll say tag equals in this case labels. And in here, what we'll just put is results underscore index. Now labels stores all of the different labels. So when we do this, it'll give us the label that it thinks our message is. So now let's try just printing the tag first of all, and see what we're, what we're getting from our model. So let's finish running that. Let's go Python main.py. And let's go hello. And now we can see that it thinks it is a greeting. If I say goodbye, it thinks it is goodbye. If I say like, what are the hours? It says hours, right? So it's giving us the tag that it thinks this intent is. Now, so far it's worked fairly well. Um, let's actually start getting some responses though. Now we're just showing the tag, but if we want to show a response, we simply need to look through this JSON file and pick one of the responses that match with these tags. So this will be the last part of the video. I know this is a bit long, but let's just power through and finish this real quick. So to do this, we're going to open up the JSON file, find that specific tag, and then just pick a random response for it. So uh, JSON should be imported up here. We're just going to copy this open from the JSON file. We're actually data is already there, so we don't need to open it because it's already loaded in. So we'll say for, in this case, tag in data intense. Now, I mean, I called it intense in the other one. doesn't really matter. Actually, let's change it to TG because we already have tag here. So we'll say for TG in data intense. And then we'll say if TG tag equals equals tag, 
we'll say responses equals, and in this case, it'll be TG and should be just responses. And then what we can do is just say, well, now that we have responses like this, uh, for, or we'll just randomly choose one of the responses and display them. So to do that, we'll say print random dot choice responses. Now I believe I did this correctly. I could have messed up a little bit. We will see. Uh, so for TG in data intense, that should loop through all of these dictionaries. Then we're going to say four responses TG. Yeah, that should work properly. Let's run this and let's try our chatbot and see if this is working now. So Python main.py, let's go Tim or let's go <laughs> hello. And now you see, good to see you. Good to see you again. Let's do goodbye. We get, hi there. How can I help you? Obviously it didn't really understand what we were saying there. Maybe let's say, what do you sell? It says we sell chocolate chip cookies for two dollars so you can see that clearly the chatbot is working uh and everything is going well so in the next video i'm just going to show you a few little tweaks with the chatbot how we can change the intense file modify it um just some extra things but honestly this is how you use the chatbot if this is all you wanted here you go i hope you guys enjoyed the series if you're not going to be watching the next video where i'm just going to be showing you some fine tuning and fixing and modifying and all of that stuff if you did please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel and i will see you again in another video